Hey everybody, Mr. Stewart here, and welcome to this screencast, which is going to provide a bit of support uh, for you when verifying geometric properties. You're going to find that your textbook is full of great examples, a lot of wonderful practice problems, and of course the internet is loaded with all kinds of support for these things. But I thought that I would add my own personal touch to the topic and provide you with this screencast. So I have a couple of examples lined up for you. And uh, here's the first one. So we're going to verify that a quadrilateral uh, has a particular property. And in this one here, we're being asked if the mid segments of this quadrilateral ABCD form a parallelogram. Okay, so I've gone ahead and plotted my points, uh, drawn in line segments for the sides. And now we're going to start into thinking about the mid segments okay so what we'll do uh, let's draw in just for the sake of argument where the mid segments are or at least to know what they are so for instance um we we'll go over here and do a little bit of a sketch if i were looking for mid segments of any particular quadrilateral so i'm just going to draw any old quadrilateral So what that means is that as you find the midpoints of this figure, okay, so these are all midpoints, what that means is that these line segments here, these are referred to as the mid segments, okay? So the question is, do the mid segments of this figure over here, do they happen to form a parallelogram? Okay. So with that information in mind, what we can do is go ahead and search for some coordinates for midpoints. So let's go ahead and find the midpoint of a b so recall that the midpoint formula is the average of your x values as the x coordinate and then the average of the y's so midpoint of a b if you like we can call it something else let's call it point e okay, is going to have the following so let's average the x is of a and b, so it's minus 7 and 9 over 2, followed by the average of the y's, which is 9 and 11. That is 9 plus 11 over 2. So that's going to give us, at the end of the day, 2 over 2 is 1, followed up by 20 over 2, which is 10. Okay. So we can confidently go to our graph and we can take the coordinates of and plot those as the midpoint. So right here. So point E or the midpoint of AB at 1 comma 10. So in like manner, what you would do is you could go ahead and do the calculations for the remaining midpoints. And if you do, here's what I think you're going to find. You're going to see that the midpoint of your next long segment, okay, so if we were to focus on the midpoint of, let's grab uh, BC. You would see that its coordinates are none other than 9, 5. Then the midpoint of our side CD. If you calculate those, and I would encourage you to definitely pause the video and try it out. You'd come up with 5 minus 6, and then the slope of the final one, or rather midpoint, I should say, of our final line segment, which is DA, or AD, if you like, would be none other than negative 3, negative 1. So let's go ahead. Let's plot all of these coordinates on our diagram. So at 9, 5, 
we have point, let's call it F, I guess, in this case. So that's point F, then G and H. So G is the midpoint of CD at 5 minus 6. And then H at minus 3, minus 1. Let's go ahead and join those particular points to create the mid-segments of quadrilateral. Okay, and so again, the job is to determine, do the mid-segments, all of these, do they form a particular shape that is a parallelogram? So there are different ways to go about doing that. One way that I'll mention, okay, and then perhaps demonstrate a different one, so you'll have a couple of strategies to go to. So one of those ways would be none other than to calculate lengths and slopes. So what we could do is you could determine, okay, in fact, lengths won't even be necessary. Uh, really what you do need is the notion that these are parallel. So really what you're after is if you can show that the slope, that's little m, so if the slope of EF is equal to the slope of GH, then you know, okay, what that means is that EF is parallel to GH. Okay. So you have that knowledge in hand. And also you would be looking for the notion that these are parallel. Okay. So if you could show that the slope of HE or EH, whatever order you want to have them in, and the slope of GF or FG, you can show that those are equal then you know that those line segments are parallel to one another. So these are kind of like if-then statements. So if you can show one, it implies the other. So being that all of those particular line segments are parallel, you could make the conclusion that that figure EFGH is a parallelogram. Okay, so the side lengths are really irrelevant in this case because parallelograms do encompass many different figures. So a rhombus is a parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram. It's just that when you go to prove if something is a rhombus, a rectangle, a square, you do have to incorporate side lengths. But any parallelogram, you'll know that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. So that's one way to come at the solution. There is another way to do it too. And I'm thinking that this is the kind of thinking that goes a bit beyond just the notion of those slopes. So something else that you can do is the following. If you were to determine the diagonals, okay? So let's, I'm gonna draw in the diagonals of this parallelogram. I'm just gonna change the color on those so that we can see them clearly. Let's make that a nice bright orange. And this one too. Okay, so our diagonals are in a bright orange color. Perfect. So something else you should know about the diagonals is the following, is that if they end up cutting each other or bisecting each other, then you know that you do have a parallelogram. So again, what that means is that this line segment has the same length as this, and this one has the same length as that, then you know that you have a parallelogram. Okay, so do we need to calculate distances? You could, if you really wanted to, you could do that. But you would still have to prove that 
this is a midpoint. See, if that's the midpoint, then we know that those diagonals are going to bisect each other. That is, cut each other in half because they have the same midpoint. So why don't we go ahead and do that, okay? So I'm just going to write a statement here. I want to prove and show that this is what we're doing. So I'm just going to type a statement in here. So if the diagonals of a parallelogram, well, I'm just going to say quad, quadrilateral. Let's keep it general. So if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, uh, they would have the same midpoint. And then it follows, let me just shrink the font size on that. So it follows that the shape formed by the mid segments would be a parallelogram. Okay, so here's another way to tackle the problem, different than the first method. So let's go ahead, let's try that out. Let's find the midpoints of those particular um, of the diagonals and we'll see if it does happen to come out to be the same. So let's see. Let's start with the midpoint of, so capital M, and let's focus on what do we have. Let's take, uh, let's start with uh, EG. Let's do that. So the midpoint of EG is going to be none other than Let's see, that coordinate would be at uh, an x value of 1, and we're going to add on the x value of g, which is at 5, I believe, yep. And then the y coordinate for that, let's see, we're going to take 10 from e, and then we're going to add on minus 6, so subtract 6. And that's going to bring us out to, I believe, 3, 2. So tentatively, we can see that we have potentially, I mean, that diagonal has a midpoint of 3, 2, but we would still need to show it for FH. So let's do that one. So the midpoint of FH, so that looks like we're going to need a 9, minus 3 or plus the negative 3. So I'm focusing on these points here right now, right? Because we use the other two for EG. We'll average that and then we'll take the 5 and the minus 1, average that, and do the calculation. And yeah, we come out with 3 comma 2. So it does make sense. This statement seems to be holding true based on the calculation that was just done. So we can make a conclusion based on that, okay, that J, uh, EFGH is a parallelogram. Okay? So there's one example of how you can prove a particular set of properties for a quadrilateral. Now, I know you guys are using a trapezoid in your example. So maybe there's something about trapezoids and their diagonals that you might be able to bring into uh, to your solutions. So let's stop this screencast right now, and uh, we'll package another one into a separate.